Now that we've talked about kinetic energy a little bit, let's take a second to talk about potential energy. And this is potential energy in its simplest form, where potential energy is mgh. So let's go back to the example of the spaceship captain. He now works operating an elevator that takes him into space. It's a really tall elevator. And he gets to choose. He can either work on a planet with twice the gravity, where the stuff he's selling is twice as valuable, or he can work on a smaller planet with one times gravity, where all the goods are cheaper, so it's only one time. And let's assume he once again pays for fuel, and his fuel is once again equal to the energy, based on the potential energy of the stuff at the top of his elevator. Which planet should he choose to live on? So pause the video, take a few seconds, and try to figure this out. Okay, so let's look at this. Let's start by writing out our equation. This is always the first step in physics. So let's look. He's going the same height on both planets, so height is a constant. But now we have two scenarios. In one, we have twice the mass, because he needs to carry twice as much of the same profit, one times the gravity, because on the lower planet, the gravity is low, but price is low, so he has to carry double quantity, and one times the height, because the height is the same. On the other planet, he only has to carry one unit of goods to make his $2, but gravity is twice as much, and height is constant. So let's see, which one has a higher potential energy? Potential energy, one, equals 2 mass times 1 gravity times 1 height is 2 mgh. Potential energy 2. Instead, we have 1 mass, 2 gravity, and 1 height, also 2 mgh. So as you can see in this scenario, it doesn't matter. Going back to our drawing, carrying half the weight at twice the gravity, or twice the weight at half the gravity, it's exactly the same. And this goes back to the fact, because in potential energy, everything's linear. If you increase mass, you increase potential energy in a linear fashion. Same deal if you increase gravity, if you increase height, all of them are linear variables. So that makes calculating things here very, very easy. But now let's take a slightly trickier situation. A, cr a crazy alien entrepreneur decides to build a really weird tower. And in this tower, you experience one meter per second of gravity on the first floor, two meters per second squared, sorry, squared, on the second floor, and three meters per second squared on the third floor. So these are the three floors. If you want to lift a 10 kilogram weight up the floor, and each floor is three meters tall, which is a fairly standard height for a floor, how much energy does it take? So think about that for a second. Then pause the video, solve it, and we'll go over it together. Let's see what we have. So gravity is not constant in this case. In the normal mgh equation, we assume that gravity is a constant. But that's not true here. So let's break it up into parts. Let's figure out the potential energy to go up the first floor, the second floor, and then the third floor. Because gravity is constant across all of those floors. So the first floor, what's our weight? Our weight's 10 kilograms. I wrote it wrong over here. So 10 kilograms, that's mass, times gravity, 1 meter per second squared, times height, 3 meters, equals 30 joules, 30 kilogram meters squared per second squared. So that's floor number one. So write that floor one, 30 joules. Floor two, same 10 kilograms, times now 2 meters per second squared, times the same 3 meters is 60 joules. In floor 3, you should be getting the hang of this by now, 10 kilograms, 2 meters per second squared, sorry, 3 meters per second squared, 3 meters, 90 joules. So now it takes us a certain amount of energy to raise it the first, second, and third floors. So we can actually just add all these together. So 30 plus 60 plus 90 is 180 joules. So that's enough energy. We could have gone up 18 meters instead of 9 meters if the entire tower had been the 1 meter per second squared gravity. On the other hand, we only would have been able to go up 
six meters if the entire tower had been at the higher gravity, the three meters per second at the top. So as you can see, it kind of averaged out overall. And I hope that made sense to you. If not, go back, look through, and try to remember that we can do calculate each interval separately and then add them all together.